how this one was phrased. And uh, the message is a paraphrase, so I do note that. So it's not a complete translation, um, but so follow along in your other translations and look up um, you know, the passage at your own leisure. But for our main reading today, we'll be here in Luke chapter 12, verses 1 through 3. The message puts it this way. By this time, the crowd, unwillingly and stepping on each other's toes, numbered into the thousands. But Jesus' primary concern was his disciples. He said to them, Watch yourselves carefully so you don't get contaminated with Pharisee yeast. Pharisee phoniness. You can't keep your true self hidden forever. Before long, you'll be exposed. You can't hide behind a religious mask forever. Sooner or later, the mask will slip and your true face will be known. You can't whisper one thing in private and preach the opposite in public. The day is coming when those whispers will be repeated all over town. May God add a blessing to the reading of his holy and perfect word. Uh, this week is Halloween, and probably there will be a lot of people dressed up in costumes and wearing masks. Uh, when I was a little boy, it wasn't particularly at Halloween necessarily, but my grandmother had bought me a Batman mask, and I liked to, to wear it, I guess, because I thought, well, Batman is powerful and good and strong enough to fight, you know, all the evils in the world. And on the flip side of that, being a small kid, I kind of felt weak and small, and I couldn't stand up to the vast evils in the world. Now, I know it's just a kid's mask, but maybe as long as I was wearing that mask, I never really understood the real me under it. But God had gifted to me as he wishes to give to all of us his strength, his power to stand for the things that are good in this world. Maybe masks only cover up who we really are and force us to pretend to be someone else. You know, in our passage, the Pharisees wore loss of masks. In fact, probably no one in Jesus' day wore more masks than they did. They were fake. And Jesus was the truth. Jesus was telling his disciples, you know, those guys, just remember, what's done in secret, God will one day reveal. They can put on all the phoniness they want, but God knows. And so he was telling his disciples, those who followed him, you don't need to wear a mask. You don't need to be fake. You don't have to fake your way through life. In fact, Jesus says he is life. Jesus said that he is the truth and he came to set us free. Sometimes though, I do think the vast majority of us put on masks, at least in a metaphorical way. We cover up, we conceal a part of who we are, parts maybe we don't want other people to see or pretend that we have it together more than we do. A couple of different masks, one of those is kind of like, you know, the tough guy mask or tough girl mask, you know, we put them on, nothing ever bothers us, nothing ever breaks the facade that we have. Um, you know, I think of uh, the former governor of, of uh, Minnesota, Jesse the Body Ventura, he was also a Navy SEAL, also a WWE wrestler and commentator, and did lots of other things. But once he made a comment about Christianity that said, uh, organized religion is a sham, it's a crutch for weak-minded people who need strength in numbers. He would later clarify, oh, but I'm a Christian. I just don't need to go to church or read the Bible and do any of that stuff. In essence, what he was saying, like, yeah, I, I kind of want the salvation thing, but uh, I don't need no one's help. That's what the mask does when we put on a tough, tough mask, right? I got this. I don't need anyone to help me, right? We never want anyone to think we're weak or need assistance or help or anything has ever is a problem for us. And if it is a problem, certainly no one is ever going to know. They might be going through something terrible and you ask how they're doing, they're like, never been better. Inside they're thinking, never been worse. Many of us, right, like to give an impression that we're strong, 
but inside there is a part of us that sometimes feels broken. It's okay to feel broken or hurt or confused at times, just when we do remember that God is the one who is always healing us. As we've already said, when we knock, God opens the door. When we seek, He will help us find. When we don't know what to do, He gives answers. If you truly trust in Him, you are never, ever alone. I'm reminded of a story that Pastor Chuck Swindoll, some of you may have seen him on TV, tells of when uh, he met a former Marine buddy. He had been in the Marines, and I double-checked that because I was like, I didn't know Chuck Swindoll was in the Marines, so I looked it up, and he, in fact, was. Um, and he was reminiscing about being in the Marines with this guy, and the guy turns to me, and he's like, you know, Chuck, the thing I miss most about those days back in the Marines and stuff was going down to the bar. I just haven't found anything like that for Christians. A place to admit my faults and talk about my battles. Reverend Swindoll thought for a moment and he replied the following. The neighborhood bar is probably the best counterfeit there is to true fellowship with the church, but it is an imitation. It gives liquor instead of grace, escape rather than reality. It flourishes not because most people are alcoholics, but because God has put within the human heart the desire to know and to be known, to love and to be loved. Friends, people want to be known. People want to be loved. Where else should they be known and loved more than the church of Jesus Christ? When we gather together for any event, for worship, for Sunday school, for Bible study, for prayer, to tell people they matter. We love them. We care for them. And in time, we care for them enough to tell them the truth, not to keep anything from them, so that they and us can mutually grow to become more of who God wants us to be. Well, sometimes we put on other masks, too, besides that tough exterior mask. Sometimes we put on the good mask, right? The good girl, the good guy mask, you know, the mask we wear to, maybe we put it on today to come to church to say, this is my good holy face and these are my holy shirt and we'll look good today. And we want everyone, you know, to believe that we're really good. And inside, maybe we're okay, good, but there's probably maybe a thinking, Maybe I'm not as good as I want everyone to think I am. During Jesus' day, the Pharisees, everyone thought they were good. In fact, Jesus' own disciples, they didn't understand when he said, unless your righteousness far outseeds that of the Pharisees, you will never see the kingdom of God. And they're like, wait, whoa, what? We thought these guys. But Jesus saw something that his disciples couldn't. He knew the hearts of those who were making such claims. He saw the mask that they were wearing, that they wanted other people to think they were holy and righteous, but Jesus said inside they were like dead man's bones. They're full of the Bible, of their interactions between those who were in the pharisaical group and Jesus. In fact, one particular encounter that just highlights this was when a Pharisee asked Jesus and his disciples to dine with them. And of course, Jesus said yes and went to his house. Uh, but before they ate, the Pharisee noted that Jesus did not go through the process that the Pharisees required of ceremonial washing of hands, of following all their traditions and procedures. And this said uh, he was greatly dismayed that someone would do this. And Jesus retorts to him, you care so much about these rituals and rules about washing your hands when you should have been concerned about your own heart about following, doing what God wants. You care more about the appearances of what everyone else thinks about you, and you don't care at all about what you actually are doing for God. Sometimes we, too, put on these masks where we, we care about appearances, right? And sometimes maybe we think, I can fool people into thinking I'm better than I am, but God sees right through all that, right? He sees to our heart. He knows whether we're living for Him and doing what He wants, or if we just put on a mask. Someone once said, you know, one of the number one reasons people say, I don't believe in Jesus is because people say, yeah, I'm a Christian, but they are like Jesse the Body Ventura. They're like, I don't go to church. I don't read the Bible. I don't, I don't act like Christ. I just take a label and a name I put on myself. 
I just put on a mask when I'm around the right people and I take it off and put on a different mask when I'm around other people. Now, none of us are going to be perfect, right? This isn't a call to be like, man, you're not perfect. Of course, none of us are perfect. We all sin. We all fall short of God's standard. But the difference between those who pursue God are like David, who when confronted with sin, admits it, confesses, makes it right. Rather than like the Pharisees who would ever, when confronted, how dare you? accuse us of doing anything wrong. We have never. Yeah, you have. Everyone has. Confess our faults before God because Jesus is not a fan of deception nor hypocrisy. In fact, I think some of his strongest words are for those things or against those things, I might more accurately say. When we intentionally fool other people by thinking we're better than we are, then we're taking the attention and glory off God and putting it on us. I know I don't want to stand before God. I hope I have not done that, or I hope that if I realize it and I repent of it, or I'm making myself look good and I'm pushing other people away from God. Because that's what the Pharisees did. They put on this mask so that people patted them on the back all the time and said how good they are, put themselves on a pedestal, and only God should be on that pedestal. And so if we're wearing that mask, take it off. You don't have to pretend to be better than you are. Just give it to God and he'll make you better than you ever thought you could be. Because he's good. So how does that apply to us? Well, if we're wearing a mask, take it off. Because we can't have an authentic community when we're all going like a masquerade ball and have masks on. And we don't know who each other really is. So don't listen to the lies of Satan and say, no, 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 no. Don't tell people that. That's embarrassing. Pretend you're above it all. Make yourself look better than you are. If someone really starts talking about some struggle they have, just make a joke saying, oh, yeah, I can relate. I once ate a cookie. You know, when I, that was my great sin. You know, no, you have to be honest and transparent. It's hard to be honest and transparent. It makes us vulnerable. Yeah, but when you're vulnerable is when you can grow, when you can mature. It's only going to be done when God leads us, when we look at his Holy Spirit, when we allow him into our lives by reading his word and praying to him that he'll change us from the inside out. It's kind of like a, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly. It's just the natural process by which something should happen. And when we're transformed, not only are we transformed, which is a wonderful thing, we get to show that transformation to others and tell them that God wants to transform their lives as well. Because he's good, not that we're good, but he is very, very good. And he sees behind our mask anyway. Whatever mask we've put on. He looks past it and he's like, I love you anyway. I see you. I see the very real you. And I love you. And guess what? If you take off that mask, I'll help you not even want to put it back on. Because the real you will be transformed into something beautiful and wonderful and honoring to God. Now sometimes we, of course, we put on these masks. We think we're protecting ourselves from a world that's nasty and mean and unaccepting. But really the mask often is just a barrier between us and the reality of life. The more we get to know each other, particularly people of like precious faith, the more comfortable we are with each other and we hide less of ourselves from others. So don't have to live in fear. You know, I think many people, we put on this mask and we keep the mask on because we say, well, if people reject me because I'm a nasty jerk, well, that's just my nasty jerk mask. <laughs> and I could take that off. They don't know the real me. But if I took the mask off and then someone doesn't like me, then they're rejecting the real me and then I'm really scared of that. You have to risk to grow. And if someone rejects the real you, God doesn't. And guess what? Most of the time when someone's rejecting you for something, it's probably not because they're doing what God wants. It's probably their own issues with their own masks. I'm reminded of the words of scripture that come to us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 13, that remind us that God sees it all. 
It says there, nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered, laid bare before the eyes of him to whom we will give an account. Yeah, he sees it all anyway. What's the point of hiding? But Romans 8.38 says, But I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, neither the present or the future, nor any power, nor any height, nor any depth, nor anything in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Our sin separates us from God because we have chosen to rebel from Him. But nothing can separate us from His love. Because while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. That's how much He loved us. He loved us so much that He can look past the corrosion of sin to who He created us to be. And He's drawing us to Him, the real you, to obey Him, to humble ourselves, to admit and confess we need Him. What better place to admit who we are than with people who also know God, who love God, who want to do what God wants. When we want to do what God wants, then we risk being vulnerable because our vulnerability helps the people around us. And when someone comes to us in a vulnerable state, we offer compassion, not judgment. We offer love, not fear. Because at the end of the day, aren't we all on an equal playing field? Don't we all sin and need God's forgiveness, His love, His mercy, His grace? That it was Jesus by His work on the cross who shed His blood that we may find such things and live at peace with Him. Many of you have probably went to a family reunion probably with some mixed results, but ideally what a family reunion is supposed to be about is being with the people who you came from, with your roots, right? Remembering the past, sometimes laughing about some funny events, sometimes shedding a tear about maybe something that was serious that transpired. But these people know you. They remember you from when you was knee-high to a grasshopper, right? They, they've known you for a long time. They know the mask you wear. They know the stupid things you've done in your life, the mistakes, the tragedies, the sins. They still let you come anyway. Isn't that what church is to be like? Coming together, sharing with others without their rejection, with the knowledge of what people have done in their past, with an idea that sometimes we'll laugh and sometimes we'll cry, but we will support and love and grow. That every time we come together, every time we meet together, that worship itself is an opportunity to thank God that He is the one that has allowed all this to take place. But we have to be real with Him. And it might not happen overnight, but pray about it. Pray that if you're aware of some fakeness, some mask you're wearing, that God would help you take it off. And if you are unaware of some mask you're wearing, that God would reveal it to you and then you would have the courage to help take it off. Because God already knows even if we have deceived ourselves. But He will help us. Don't be like some people, right? Who just know how to play the game. Who are just going to a church and then they know how to act. They know the right words to say. They might know some scripture but they have never asked Jesus into their hearts. They don't live for him. They don't wish to serve him. I asked Dave Ernie if I could share a story that he's just shared on Wednesday, but he's shared it many other times with me about when he was younger. You know, one of the things that was important was to come forward and accept Jesus, and it is very important at a church event. So he did that one Sunday, but he only did that because he wanted to make the pastor happy. And then, you know, Okay, maybe he won't mention it to Dave every week. We can't just fake our way through things because we're so gracious that Dave actually did later, of course, really accept Jesus as Lord and Savior and give his life to him. And I'm blessed to know Dave, and he's blessed my life in so many ways. But Dave's not alone in that, right? There's many people throughout this country that say, hey, man, one time I walked down to the front of a church, but they never accepted Jesus because their hearts were never for Jesus. They were just doing some sort of motion some compulsion that they were supposed to do. 
if you don't know for sure that you have a relationship with God, what kind of minister would I be if I didn't continue to ask that if you don't know Jesus, that today can be a day when you make restoration with him? That if you've never known him, don't leave this building today without knowing for sure. Because he is good. He will forgive you. He will help remove any fakeness from your life, any masks. And he will replace them with the truth of who he is. Because he infinitely loves you and he values you. Because you're like a coin. That was so dirty, so corroded. You can't even read the dates. You're not even sure if this is a penny or what kind of thing. Is this Canadian or from Zambia? I don't know. I can't even tell. But God takes that so corroded thing. And when he purifies it and he shines it up, it is so bright and so shiny and so beautiful because it come, becomes back to what it was always created to be. Sin corrodes all of our lives, yeah. But God wants to remove that so that you are shiny and beautiful and you are as he created you to be. Let's pray. God, as human beings, sometimes we conceal ourselves. We put on masks, so to speak. Um, we want to protect ourselves. Sometimes we do so even out of good motivation. Say, hey, I don't want to burden people with my problems. Well, in reality, we're only creating separation from the image of we want to project and the reality of who we are. Sometimes we put on masks to try to hide or deceive. We are so afraid of other people rejecting us, not loving us. Sometimes, Lord, we try to hide from you and keep secret sins from you, which is quite foolish. So help us to stop being fools who think we can hide our true nature from you. If any of us is wearing something that's fake today, help us to take it off. Force us to look in the mirror. Take a good hard look at ourselves and examine if we are living right for you. And if there's any part of us that isn't in line with you, help us to rededicate ourselves to serving you. Help us to be humble before you. To confess when we fall short. To seek you. To fully understand our need for you. And then you'll take us. With all of our faults with all the things that I think in my head I can never change. And you will make us better. You will redeem us and place value upon us. You will wash the corrosion of sin from our lives. And so give us courage that we may trust you and place our faith in you, that we will stop hiding or attempting to hide in the shadow from you. Take us where we are and make us better than we ever thought we could be. In Jesus' name, amen.